And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're taking a look at wiring tortoise switch machines. I'm embarrassed to admit that I have gotten this far in model railroading and have, have never actually wired a tortoise machine before. Um, I'm going to show you this at least uh, as much for my own information or my documentation. It is for yours. Um, and basically to do document my my uh, journey through building this layout. What I've got here is, uh, of course, tortoise machines. I've got a double pull, double throw switch here and a couple of bipolar LEDs. Uh, I've got a wall wart powering this whole thing. Uh, these uh, tortoise machines and double pull, pull double throw switches uh, take off of uh, an estate that uh, Milo and I picked up uh, a couple of years ago. And the uh, bipolar LEDs are from allelectronics.com. Um, I got those last fall or last spring before they shut down, unfortunately. So uh, demonstration again, I've got that wall wart powering. I've got that led into this uh, switch here. I plan to uh, use one wall wart per panel, and I'll show you making those panels later on. Uh, those are pretty well documented, but I've actually got a way that I'm going to do those. Um, basically just the uh, the design or the printing of them anyway. Um, so anyway, I've got the uh, wall wart powering the double pole, double throw switch here. And I will throw that. And you see that the switch machine moves. Moves the points on the layout or moves the point on, points on the switch. And reverses the polarity here uh, on, this is uh, pins, pin number one that I have that on. Um, so these are bi bipolar LEDs. They only work with electricity full flowing through them one way. So obviously I've got them wired opposite from each other. So um, when I flip the switch, uh, it either turns red or green based on the uh, direction that the power is flowing through that LED. I plan to use pins number four and number five on the tortoise machine to accept power from the DCC bus on the layout. And then pins number two and number seven will go to the frog on the switch machine. So for those of you that who are not familiar with uh, this kind of wiring, so we have uh, we have the rails coming in here. Uh, this is the, the part that we refer to as the frog on the uh, on the switch or the turnout, and. Under normal circumstances, this is a DCC friendly turnout. This is an Atlas code 80, excuse me, this is a code um, 83 Atlas turnout here. Um, and you see these holes on either side of the frog. Those are actually for screws or for places to solder a, uh, a wire in there. So what we have here is essentially, there is no electrical continuity between this part and either of these two rails here. Uh, what we can do is, when we come in here, if we have, obviously you get a dead short situation if you wire one or the other polarity, but if you've got a situation where you can reverse the polarity based on the uh, position that the switch is in, you're in a lot better shape, and you provide continuity to the locomotive who is passing over this, this portion of the, uh, the track. So that's what the uh, tortoise machine does for us, is provides... Uh, uh, the correct polarity for this piece here, providing a little bit more reliability, a little bit more electrical continuity um, for this little part of the switch. Maybe smoother operation is the hope here. So I know this is really intro level type material for those of you who have uh, done this before, uh, but I just wanted to document this and show you uh, the basics or show you kind of the ideas of what I have going forward here. Um, probably the next step here is to design, design a panel and uh, get some of these installed and start installing um, these double pull, double throw switches on that panel, as well as the LEDs to indicate which direction the uh, turnout is facing. 